I recently came across an old Wired article about a beanbag gripper which is made by a company called Empire Robotics. There's some video on the page of the gripper picking up Lego style blocks and assembling them. There's also some video on YouTube of the gripper picking up and shooting ping pong balls. In that video the guy from Empire Robotics explains that the gripper is full of small granular beads which turns into a solid lump when air is sucked out. This is called a jamming phase transition and it's essentially the same as vacuum packing coffee beans which turns them into a solid brick. So today I'm going to attempt to make a robot gripper like this using off the shelf squeezy toys so I don't have to mould or cast my own flexible membrane. For some reason I could only buy a box of 12 on Amazon so that's what I've got and they come in different colours. They're pretty squishy though so they're made of some sort of silicone rubber and they seem to have water beads inside. The beads inside seem pretty soft so I'm not sure they're going to be any use as they are but the rubber's really really stretchy and seems pretty tough so the membrane should be ideal. I was hoping I could kind of draw them out and reduce air pressure inside so the rest solidifies but the rubber's so stretchy and the beads are so soft that's not going to work at all. So it's time to dissect one. They have a thick rubber section on which is presumably part of the moulding process for the membrane and that's really easy to drill through and a really tough place that we can put a hose in to remove the air. So after a bit of trial and error I managed to put some pliers in and draw that hole apart and it doesn't split the rest of the thing open so the rubber's pretty tough. It was pretty tricky but I managed to squeeze all of the beads out of the inside leaving the membrane completely intact. Yep they look like weird squashy things that seem to be full of water or some other liquid and the whole thing's quite wet inside. But the membrane that's left looks amazing, it's really really stretchy and pretty tough looking so that looks like it's going to be ideal for our gripper. I managed to insert a tube in it which goes in that hole and the hole is really grippy because the rubber's quite grippy as well and that means even if I inflate it quite a lot the membrane doesn't pop off the edge of the tube and it's held on really well. But we need a replacement granular material so I'm using some BB pellets which are really easy to find. So I 3D printed a funnel and started to fill up the membrane with BB pellets just trying to force them down that tube and they go in with a bit of a wiggle. So I've sort of half filled it and it's very flexible and you can see if I just suck the air out the whole thing turns solid just like the vacuum packed coffee beans. And if I mould the whole thing into a shape and suck the air out it maintains its shape making a solid mass. But let's see if we can use it to pick up a ping pong ball. I've just put it on a rubber mat so it doesn't roll away. So if I mould the whole thing around that seems to work pretty well. The more I try to push the membrane and mould those BBs around the object of course the better grip we get around the object. So I 3D printed a cup shape that's got the hose exit at the back and that allows me to really push that down and mould around the ping pong ball when we want to pick it up. So that's much easier now than having to push it down with my hands. The principle of this seems to be working pretty well but I'd really like to make a bigger one. So I found a bigger squeezy toy. And it's time to print a bigger cup to mount it in. But before we look at that it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor which is PCBWay. PCBWay provide both PCB manufacture and PCB assembly under the same roof so you can get them to solder the components onto your PCB as well as make the board and they'll do surface mount and through hole assembly. PCBWay have also launched new CNC services including online CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing and injection moulding. PCBWay CNC machining services include a wide range of materials including aluminium, stainless steel and various plastics. If you don't see the material you like you can also choose from custom materials. Check out the PCBWay website to browse through a variety of finishes and get a quote. 
PCBWay manufacture all sorts of boards, including standard fiberglass PCBs, but also aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs, and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. Prices start at $5 for 10 standard PCBs and $30 for 10 PCBs with assembly, but new customers can get $5 credit so you can get 10 PCBs for free the first time you order. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I'll put that link in the description to this video. This time my cup has a handle to hold it by and it has a separate hole for the hose exit which is slightly off centre. So my squeezy toy fits in there quite nicely although the cup might be a bit on the big side. But again we've got to drain all of the alien frog spawn out and be left just with the rubber membrane. I filled it up with BBs again and that's what's left which is basically a bigger version of what we had before. So that fits into the cup shape but of course now it's much heavier because it's bigger and it's full of more BBs so we need some way of holding it in so it doesn't just fall out. I made this bezel which will bolt on all the way round and hopefully it will be able to pinch the rubber and actually hold it into the cup all the way around. So after a bit of wiggling and adjustment I managed to bolt that down with the four bolts through the four holes and that seems to hold the membrane and the BBs in pretty well. So now we can still inflate it and remove the air and that seems to work just as well as the first one but now we've got a larger surface area. So let's see if we can pick up a really big object. Yep, just about, not sure how well it'll stay in there, but I'm pretty bored of sucking the air out with my lungs, so I bought this massive syringe which is 200 cubic centimetres. So it looks like it'll work and there should be enough capacity there to remove all the air, but we're going to need something pretty hefty to pull that back. So I designed a 3D printed mechanism which is going to use a Dynamix or servo, and that's going to pull the air in and out as the servo rotates. So let's get those parts printed and see how well it works. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printed projects and check out 3dfuel.com. We've got the main base of the assembly which holds the main part of the syringe and that's held in place with a clamp on top which is basically a plate screwed on with four screws. We need to make the whole assembly quite rigid so there's an assembly which holds the servo and that's made of two parallel plates with a block in between and that means it will be quite sturdy and rigid. That screws onto the base with four screws, so that makes quite a rigid assembly. The plunger part of the syringe has another hinge point on top which is again clamped on in a similar way, and that allows the whole thing to be fitted together so that the plunger can move up and down pulled by the servo. Thanks to Robotis for the Dynamixel XM540 W270T servo. Robotis gave me a number of servos for the really useful robot projects and I've kept one of these spare to make the gripper so this is an ideal use for it. It's a pretty powerful servo at around 100kg centimetres tall. I'm using the Dynamixel shield for Arduino Uno to control the servo because it's controlled by a TTL serial bus and the Dynamixel library for Arduino. My mechanism seems to work pretty well, although you'll notice that I've tied a piece of black bungee cord around, and that's to help guide the syringe plunger back inside the main part. When the syringe is fully extended, the plunger tends to skew, and so the mechanism gets jammed and doesn't push it back. Ideally it needs redesigning, but for purposes of testing this should be sufficient just to pull it back in with a bit of a spring. But in any case, it looks like I've got enough air capacity and enough force to go and suck all the air out, so that we can form that membrane into a rigid shape to grip objects. And one of the advantages of doing it this way is that it's all self-contained and controlled by electricity, rather than having to carry around any pumps or any compressed air to suck and blow the membrane. And with the addition of three buttons mounted on strip board, which I had left over from another project, we can control the position of the syringe. At the moment I've got three positions, one for blowing air all the way out and ejecting objects, one for the middle where it's kind of squashy and we can stick an object in there, and one for sucking the air out all the way. 
So let's try and pick up some objects with the gripper. First of all we're going to use a ping pong ball. So I've got the plunger in the mid position and I'm going to suck the air out. So that seems to work okay and it stays in there pretty well. Until we push all the air out and eject it and then it pops out. So let's try an orange. Well that's not too bad but it does just fall out by itself. Let's try that again. So not too great. Let's try an even larger object. Now I've got an apple. So it feels like the membrane's squashy enough to go around the object so I'm not quite sure what's happening. But this doesn't seem to work very well either and doesn't grip it at all. So I decided to add more BBs to my membrane so that we can get a tighter grip and there's more to grip around the object. So let's top it up with some more and see what happens. As well as the membrane being fuller I'm only using the two extreme positions on the syringe and I've made sure there's less air in there so when it's sucked back it pulls back much tighter. Let's try those objects again starting with the ping pong ball which of course still works absolutely fine and you can see that's stuck in there pretty well. It's a bit harder to push it out because I'm not pushing so much air out so ideally I could do with a bigger syringe which would expand and contract the membrane more. But I'm pretty happy with the results for something made from a squeezy toy. So let's try the orange. So I can pick it up this time but it falls out if I shake it. But you can see that it's left a shape in the membrane and everything's looking quite rigid so it probably just comes down to the size of the object and its contours. What about the apple? I'll try it this way because it's got a stem on top. But still not too much luck with that one. So I thought probably items which have harder contours will be easier for the gripper to grip around and mould around the shape. So let's try a roll of solder. So that's quite a lot heavier than the orange but it stays in better, probably because of that rim around the top of the reel. Let's try the cap off an aerosol. That's got rounded contours but it's much lighter than the solder so again that stays in pretty well and I can shake it and it doesn't fall out just like the ping pong ball. I want to try something smaller and squarer so I've got an off cut from some 2020 aluminium extrusion which has got lots of features in. That doesn't seem to work at all well although you can see the indent left in the rigid membrane when I suck the air out. Let's try that again but this time I'm going to push it down really hard. So this time I can pick it up and it stays in pretty well presumably because the BBs and the membrane have moulded around the object really well. The other item the original picked up was some Lego bricks. I've stuck a few together to give a better contour and to make it larger, so let's see how that goes. Well, it falls out if I shake it, but let's try again pushing it down really hard so we mould around the object. And that seems to be pretty good now, so there's definitely something in that. I think ideally we need a bigger membrane and more BBs. This already weighs 600 grams and I used around half a pot of BBs. There's around 400 grams left in the pot that I had so I guess if we were to make it double the size it would weigh almost a kilogram but it would probably stick to objects better. I think to make a better version of this we probably need to custom mould our own membrane. I can't find any bigger squeezy toys than the 100mm diameter one I've used in here which works okay but if we look at the original jamming gripper from Empire Robotics the membrane sticks out quite a lot and objects are only placed kind of into the tip of it rather than going all the way into this cup. The other issue I've got here is that there's still some air pressure locked in this system because of the syringe so it's quite hard to actually insert objects because it's like pushing into a balloon. What we really need is a tap we can open to allow air to be pushed out as we insert the object and then close it and then suck the rest of the air out. That causes a bit of a problem with blowing the air back in of course because the air pressure or at least the air volume would constantly change whereas with the original it looks like they've got a pump to suck air out and compressed air to put it back in from different sources and probably some air pressure sensing so they can work out where they are as well. The original one costs $4,000 though and obviously mine is significantly cheaper 
as an experimental model, which I'm pretty happy with for what it is. I might come on and make another version, but for now I'm going to publish the CAD for this as open source, so you can make one if you can find a 100mm squeezy toy somewhere and a 200 cubic centimetre syringe. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description to this video as well. Alright, that's all for now.